Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy the 20th chapter. Here in Israel united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom. Welcome to 15 Minutes with a Captain. I am Captain Zakar. And to my right, Soldier Joshua. All right. And we today we're going to go over Romans 11, grafting in real quickly, quickly to give the sense and the understanding of this uh, great mystery that Christianity has confused the whole entire world with. All right. Let's start out at Romans chapter 11, and we're going to read 1 through 5. The book of Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. Yep. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. God forbid he's cast away his people that he has chosen since the foundations. Read on. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Uh -huh. God hath not cast away his people. God hath not cast away his people. Read. Which he foreknew. Now go to Jeremiah 31. Let's prove that with precepts because that's how you read the Bible. Get the understanding thereof. Jeremiah chapter 31, and let's read 35 through 37. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 35. Yep. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, uh -huh. which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Uh -huh. If those ordinances depart from before me, if says... The, if the moon, the sun, the stars, if those ordinances, the way they operate in the skies, if those things change, read, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me read. forever. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured. A if heaven above can... It's, it's three different heavens that we know of. Four, I think. Four heavens. And you can't measure the one that the Most High sits in. You don't know where it starts. You don't know where it ends. Read. And the foundations of the earth searched out beneath. Uh -huh. I will also cast off all the seed of Israel. God is saying that Esau don't even know how deep the ocean truly is. It's places that he ain't even got to, that he got uh, uh, instruments that he can't even go to. Read. For all that they have done, saith the Lord. So if you can find those things out, then God said, I'll cast away the seed of Israel. So Israel is still here today. It's the blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians. Going back to Romans 11, let's read verse 2 again. Romans chapter 11 and verse 2. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias? Which is Elijah. Go ahead. How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. A lot of people feel that way when you first come into the truth. You feel like you're the only one that knows you, Israel. That's not the case. Read. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed down, bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Now, I want you to understand it has not changed from verse 2 where it says, uh, verse 1 uh, that he's God cast away his people has not changed. He's talking about I got reserved a remnant of people. It's going to say it in the next verse. Read verse 5. Verse 5. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Just to show you that we ain't taking this out of context that the Lord is talking about. It's a remnant that shall return. Jump over to Romans chapter 9, and let's read 25 through 27. Romans chapter 9, verse 25. As he saith also in O.C. O.C. is Hosea in the Old Testament. Read. I will call them my people, which were not my people, uh -huh. and her beloved, which was not beloved. 
and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. So at this time, if you keep it in cultural context like Christianity likes to do, they would have been called Romans. They would have been called Corinthians. They would have been called Parthians and Medes, like it says in Isaiah 11, in Acts 2. But we're going to prove that more and more. Keep reading. Verse 27. Verse 27. It says, also crieth concerning Israel. Concerning Israel, go ahead. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, uh -huh. a remnant shall be saved. A remnant shall be saved. So going back to Romans chapter 11, that remnant in verse 5 is talking about the remnant of the children of Israel shall be saved. Now let's read Romans 11 and 11. Let's jump down to there. Romans chapter 11 and verse 11. I say then. Have they stumbled that they should fall? Have they stumbled that they should fall? Who's the they that should fall? Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8, and let's read 14 and 15 to show who was they that was prophesied to fall. Read that. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 14. And he shall be for a sanctuary. But for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense uh -huh. to both the houses of Israel. Both the houses of Israel, meaning the northern kingdom and, and the southern kingdom, the house of Judah and the house of Israel. Read. For a jinn and for a snare uh -huh. to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. It's talking about Christ. Read. And many among them shall stumble and fall. And what? And fall. Uh -huh. And be broken and be snared and be taken. So it's talking about the house of Israel would fall. Go back to uh, Romans chapter 11 and 11. And, and detail, uh, in detail what it's talking about, it's talking about the Pharisees and those that followed after the Pharisees and believed in what they believed in. Let's read Romans 11 and 11 again. Romans chapter 11 and verse 11. I say then. Have they stumbled that they should fall? Have they stumbled that there's no repentance for the house of Israel? Read. God forbid. God forbid. Israel can always repent. There's only one people on the face of the earth all that, that has no chance at mercy from God. Let's go to that in Hebrews. Now, see, the reason why I say that about mercy from God, all nations going to have a uh, chance at being a, a servant. Uh, an eternal servant when we are ruling. And we're going to treat you right because that's what God told us to do. But it's one people that God said, no, no, no. They can't change, repent, no mercy for them. Let's read that in uh, Romans. I mean, not Romans, uh, Hebrews. Yep, Hebrews chapter 12. And let's read verse uh, 15, 16. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Through 17, read. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Uh -huh. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. As Esau and all of his descendants, which are the so-called white men. Read. Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Here's the point. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. He was rejected and did what? For he found no place of repentance, uh -huh. though he sought it carefully with tears. So all nations are going to have their hand at servitude except for Esau. He has no place of repentance with God. When that time comes, he's going to serve out his bondage, and then there shall be none remaining of the house of Esau, thus saith the Lord. Now we're going back to Romans chapter 11, and let's read verse 11 again. Romans chapter 11 and verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? So this lets you know right now, this ain't talking about grafted in, no white folk. God already said in Hebrews that ain't no chance for these uh, for the Edomites, right? And let's, now we're going to prove even further it's not talking about other nations being grafted in either. Read. God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. What does that mean, salvation has come to the Gentiles? Let's go to the book of Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts, and we're going to read 13, and let's read 46 real quick. The book of Acts, chapter 13, and verse 46. Uh -huh. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Who is that? To the, is, to the uh, house of Judah, according to Zechariah 12 and 7. Read. But seeing ye put it from you. 
and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Uh -huh. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. We turn to the Gentiles. Now read verse 47. Verse 47. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, uh -huh. that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Now let's see what Gentiles that, that the, the Lord is quoting and talking about. Give me that in Matthew chapter 4. Let's read 12 through 16. Let's see what Gentiles that, uh, that the prophets, the disciples were to be a light to. Matthew chapter 4, let's read 12 through 16. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 12. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Uh -huh. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast, in the borders of Zebulon uh -huh. and Naphtali. And Naphtali, which are two tribes, Zebulon and Naphtali, two of the twelve tribes of Israel. Read. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Now we just read about Isaiah prophesying about a remnant, right? Read. Saying, the land of Zebulon. And the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, uh -huh. beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Land of the Gentiles. So where Zebulon and Naphtali live, they said, those is the Gentiles up there in north Israel. They don't mess with us in the southern kingdom. They don't keep the laws. They live like Gentiles. Here's the proof. Verse 16. Verse 16. The people which sat in darkness uh -huh. saw a great light. They saw what? Great light. They saw a great light. Read. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung light up. Light is sprung up. Now we're going back to Romans. Let's go back to Romans because we bring it out the precepts upon precept understanding. Let's read that. Romans chapter 11 and let's read verse where we pick up at 11 again. Romans chapter 11 and verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Have they stumbled that there's no repentance for them? Read. God forbid. Uh-huh. But rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. To the Gentiles, to the northern kingdom. Read. For to provoke them to jealousy. Uh-huh. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world. The riches of the world. It's not talking about one nation falling and everybody getting some money. Go to verse 33. Let's say what it's, see what it's talking about, the riches of the world. Read that. Verse 33. Uh-huh. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. So the riches of the world is the knowledge and wisdom of God. Let's prove how valuable that is. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's read chapter 3, and we're going to read 13 through 15. Let's see how valuable the wisdom of God is. Read. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. Uh -huh. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. So the value of wisdom is more valuable than silver. Read. And the gain thereof than fine gold. Woo, read. She is more precious than rubies, uh -huh. and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. So you cannot compare all the money in the world to wisdom. And what's more valuable than the knowledge of Jesus the Christ coming and giving you a chance at repentance, although you have what? Fallen away. Let's go back to Romans now. Romans chapter 11, and let's read verse 12 again. Romans chapter 11 and verse 12. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles. The wisdom of the Gentiles is going to increase through Jesus Christ. Read. How much more their fullness. Uh -huh. For I speak to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. Paul said, I am the apostle of the Gentiles. Let's see what he's talking about right there. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's read one and two. He says that I am the apostle of the Gentiles. See, this is what Christianity do. Oh, he's the apostle of the Gentiles. That's talking about me and all the other nations on the earth. No, it's not. Not one single bit. Ball that thought up and throw it in the trash. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. Uh-huh. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. I Who? Would, brethren. Brethren, right? Read. I would not have you ignorant. Uh -huh. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. Hold on. You was what? Gentiles. Brothers, you were Gentiles before I came and preached Christ to you, the wisdom of Christ. Read. 
carried away unto these dumb idols. You were Gentiles, but now you taught, you turned away and cast away the Gentile, the idols. You are coming back to your true nature of living like Israel. Here's the proof that those Corinthians he just called Gentiles are actually Israelites. Go to Acts chapter 18, and let's read 1 and 2. The book of Acts chapter 18 and verse 1. Yep. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. And came to where? To Corinth. Paul said, I'm the apostle of the Gentiles. We just read in the book of Corinthians that he called the, the Corinthians brothers, right? So it says, Paul departed from Athens and he came to Corinth. Read. And found a certain Jew. Who? A certain Jew. So it was Jews in Corinth. Read. Named Aquila. Born in Pontus, lately come from Italy. What is in Italy? Rome. So we now we understand that those that we read it about in Rome, who's he talking about? Jews. Read. With his wife Priscilla. Uh-huh. Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. Hold on. Who, who is Paul talking to in Romans 11? Read that again. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy. Oh, man. Read, keep reading. With his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. Let's go back to Romans 11 and let's read about some more Jews that was living like Gentiles. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.